Hello, welcome back. Today I'm at the Mizpah Cemetery in Platteville, Colorado. We're going to be visiting the grave of Rattlesnake Kate. So follow me, I'm going to tell you about her story as we go look for her grave. Kate McHale Slaughterback was born July 25th, 1893 to Wallace and Albina McHale in a log cabin near Longmont, Colorado. In her early life, she was known to enjoy wearing pants instead of dresses and loved shooting guns and working hard. An independent lady, Kate was progressive for the time. She had married and divorced several times. I think it was around six times. And she had also been trained as a nurse and taxidermist. Rumor has it that she was also a bootlegger. On October 28, 1925, Catherine McHale Slaughterback was out with her three-year-old adopted son, Ernie. They were on horseback and headed toward a lake near her farm in Hudson, Colorado, after hearing what sounded like hunters. Kate hoped they would find ducks left by the hunters, but what they found instead were over a hundred migrating rattlesnakes. Kate fired the bullets in her 22 Remington rifle until none remained. She had disturbed the snakes and soon Ernie, Kate, and her horse were surrounded. Worried about her son Ernie and her horse, and with nothing left in the gun, Kate grabbed a nearby sign. Ironically, it's believed to have been a no hunting sign and began killing the rattlesnakes one by one until all were dead. According to Kate, quote, I found that I fought them with the club not more than three feet long, whirling constantly for over two hours before I could kill my way out of them and get back to my faithful horse and Ernie, who were staring at me during my terrible battle, not more than 60 feet away, end quote. All totaled, she killed 140 snakes. The story immediately spread like wildfire. And according to Kate, soon a newspaper reporter came and had me string 140 dead rattlesnakes on a wire and have my photo taken. The story of her bravery earned Kate national notoriety. Reports of her snake killing story and photos emerged and the incident earned her the nickname Rattlesnake Kate. Kate was a lady of many talents and someone who did not waste anything. Prior to the incident, Kate had taken a correspondence class from the Northwestern School of Taxidermy in Omaha, Nebraska. She was also proficient at sewing. Putting both skills to work, she used a fair amount of the snake skins and rattles to create a one-of-a-kind flapper-style dress with matching shoes and accessories. The snake skins were attached to a simple-style underdress. According to her son Ernie, Kate wore the dress to a few parties and supposedly wore the dress while she danced on top of a tavern bar in Juarez, Mexico. Kate would ultimately go on to raise rattlesnakes on her property, extracting their venom for profit. She would also make and sell snakeskin souvenirs. And she also was a nurse during World War II and lived in El Paso, Texas for a few years. Three weeks before her death, Kate donated the dress to what was then called the Greeley Municipal Museum. She claimed the dress was patented and that she once had an offer from the Smithsonian Institute to purchase the dress. She died October 6, 1969 at the age of 76. And at her request, her headstone reads, Rattlesnake Kate. She was survived by her son, two grandsons and two great-grandchildren. In 1987 and 1988, 
Ernie donated additional items of Kate's to the museum, including her 22 Remington rifle. And there was just a musical actually here in Denver at the Denver Center of Performing Arts, Arts called the Rattlesnake Kate about her story. So we are coming up to her grave here. As you can see, it does say Rattlesnake Kate, daughter of Wallace and Albina Mikhail, July 25th, 1893, October 6th, 1969. I see next to her, there's also some Mikhails, so I don't know, maybe those are relatives as well. Yeah, her and her story are very famous here in Colorado. So it's really cool to come see her grave. It's been on my list for a while now, so I'm glad I did it. And actually, now we're going to head to Greeley to go to the History Museum and actually get to see her actual dress made out of the rattlesnake skins. And also her um, house is there in Greeley as well, so I'm going to try to drive by and see that so if you're interested stick around to see her actual dress and home rest in peace rattlesnake kate all right i'm at the Greeley history museum we're gonna go inside and check out some things from rattlesnake kate including the famous dress all right here is her famous dress even a necklace and some shoes and a headband this is rattlesnake dress and necklace 1925 this dress and underdress were designed constructed and worn by rattlesnake Kate slaughter back from the skins of rattlesnake she killed she created the necklace by stringing some of the larger rattles onto cotton thread to wear the dress. And then also rattlesnake shoes and headband, 1925. Headband made with 37 rattles and shoes covered by Kate Slaughterback with skins from snakes that she killed. Sorry for the glare, guys. They have it in this glass case here. That is pretty amazing. That is definitely worth coming out here to see this dress made from rattlesnake skins. That is uh, pretty amazing. I'll try to get it without me and the glare there. And they also have her 22 Remington rifle here that she used to kill the snakes with. And they have a doll of her. And I guess this bracelet was made and worn by her as well. That's very cool. Nothing beats that dress though. The Centennial Village Museum purchased and restored Kate's old farmhouse. Kate had built this house herself. Now, unfortunately, um, the museum was closed. They're only open during the summer months, so I wasn't able to get in and tour it, but I got my drone out um, to get a few shots.
hope you enjoyed that video and getting to see the grave and dress of Rattlesnake Kate. Please like and subscribe for some more videos and I'll see you at the next grave. Thanks.